This video's for you, chaps, Magoo. Muldrotha versus Augustine the Fourth. All right. Okay, another user bringing Augustine the Fourth. Now we are still playing Muldrotha. Going to keep that one because we've got a turn one Mystic Remora. So cracking wooded foothills for a blue source will get down the Mystic Remora here. And our opponent put in a Sol Talisman into exile, so not playing a Sol Ring like I thought they would there. No reason not to pay into this here, because we're just going to uh, play the Carpet of Flowers on our main phase. And then we just hope that our opponent gets into some islands. We drew into Ristic Study this turn. And there go Sensei's Divining Top into our Mystic Remora, so we'll draw at least one card there. Hopefully it's a land for the Ristic Study. It is not, but it is some mana in the form of the Deathrite Shaman. So we'll forego the Mystic Remora here. And I'll get down the Deathrite Shaman if we... I was going to say, if we draw into a land, then I'll get down the Ristic Study instead. Uh, not making any mana with Carpet of Flowers. There aren't any islands in play yet. Play out the Mystic Remora. Play out the Ristic Study, and we'll get out the Deathrite Shaman as well. They play out an Esper Panorama, and then sacrifice the Flood Plain. So there we see our first island. That means Carpet of Flowers is going to start getting us some more mana. And they play into Azoria Signet. Likely going to pay the tax for Ristic Study, apparently not. We will draw off that then. And that makes us a land. And then playing pretty greedily, playing into it again. Creatures your opponent's control, enter the battlefield tapped. Don't know if I'm really worried about that. Draw into uh, Sadisi, Undead Vizier. And manage to get ourselves into yet another land. We'll just make black, I don't think it really matters. So I'll play out the Windswept Heath, I think... Maybe going for Sadisi this turn, maybe setting up an Entomb or something like that would be a good idea. So Sadisi can come down and exploit itself. And we will use the Tutor on that. And then we've only got a couple of big creatures that we're likely to go for. There's Nezahal. And then where is the Demon? It is the Razaketh. Uh, nothing to sacrifice with Razaketh, so we'll just go for Nezahal into our hand. And we'll be able to hard cast that next turn, so uh, let's... Play out the Fiend Artisan as well. Exile our opponent's land as opposed to ours. Make green mana and play out the Fiend Artisan, which is only a 2-2 at the moment. Our opponent does get a Sal Talisman this turn. That does count as casting when they do it from Suspend. So they will have to pay Ristic Study Tax if they don't want us to draw, but you know, once again not paying into that like they should. Now it is a bribery, our opponent searching through our library. Like I say, I think it's just the Razaketh that they're after there, really. Once again, drawing with the Ristic Study. Then spinning with the Sensei's Divining Top. They did grab the Razaketh, by the way. So swinging in at us, we are wide open, so the 2-1 can hit us. Still only one island over there, so still only making one mana. Let's go for blue. Drew into Collector Oaf, or Auf, however you say it. Um... So we could switch off their artifacts there. Force them to go for some kind of removal onto that. Anyway, we'll grab a black and blue source with the Bloodstained Mire. Play our Muldrotha the Grave Tide here. And then we've got access to a bunch of stuff in our bin. I think I'd rather get down the Collector than the Mystic Remora here. So let's exile one of these lands. Got two green lands, so we'll get rid of one of those. And down comes Collector. Uh, Alright, our opponent's sacrificing and going to grab something with a tutor from the Razaketh. Uh, if we have our Muldrotha survive, then next turn we could go for Sadisi and an answer to Razaketh. Uh, could always animate dead on it regardless and get an answer. Maybe should have done that this turn, but I don't mind them sacrificing their creatures to be honest. Playing out another island into our carpet of flowers. And there's a Path to Exile. We'll get to fix our colours a little bit at least. Looks like we're going to be drawing a card as well. Yeah, really shouldn't be allowing us to draw the amount that they are. Uh, but they get to switch their rocks back on anyway. Spinning with the Sensei's Divining Top. And in comes their commander, Grand Arbiter Augustine the Fourth. Once again, giving us a Trinket Mage this time. Swinging at us with the 8-8 Flying Trampler. We've got quite a bit of black in hand and I might recast the Sadisi this turn, so... Yeah, making black with the Carpet of Flowers. Let's go for a 3-mana Animate Dead onto our Sadisi first of all. That can exploit itself. So we then get to Tutor something up, and I want to be getting rid of the Razaketh here really. 
Uh, could just be an ether spell bomb, I suppose. We could just set up these uh, as weirding this turn as well. They've only got two cards in hand, but yeah, let's go for the spell bomb. Play the spell bomb for two mana. Then we'll put blue into that. Bounce the Grand Arbiter back to hand first. Then it will only cost one to cast the spell bomb out of the graveyard. Looks like, yep, they're going for sacrificing with the Razaketh, so they're going to add two command attacks to that. But they do get a tutor out of it. So now that they've tutored, we can crop rotation. Argument to be made for me going for that uh, before the tutor resolves, but yeah, I don't think it really matters. We get them to counter either way. All right, they're just spinning the Sensei's top. Crop rotation grabs us a Gaia's Cradle, which currently taps for three mana. And we haven't played a land yet, so why don't we just grab... Yeah, we can still grab a blue source with the wooded foothills. We don't have the, um, what is it called, the breeding pool, so we'll shock that in. Tap the guy's cradle down for three mana, tap that down for blue. We'll go Trinket Mage into Sol Ring, then play the Sol Ring. Tap that down, we play the Aether Spell Bomb from our graveyard as our artifact for the turn. Then Aether Spell Bomb, Sacrifice, Bounce, Razaketh, back to hand. And then is it just Animate Dead onto uh, the Sadisi again? I think we can do that. So Sadisi comes into play. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll just sacrifice the Sadisi itself again. Trinket Mage can grab us the Walking Ballista, but so can the Sadisi, so it doesn't really matter. Do have a Walking Ballista combo in here with Utopia Sprawl and Arbor Elf. Gonna take us a short while to set it up though at this rate. So we'll take the, where is it, the Utopia Sprawl now, and we can cast it this turn. Don't think our opponent will be too worried about that. Tap down the Deathrite Shaman in order to do that, we'll just get rid of a forest. Make green, Utopia Sprawl onto, uh, we'll put it on the bayou, and that can make blue mana. So now we've got all three colours there, and we'll swing in at our opponent finally. Might be seeing a Supreme Verdict here, although it looks bigger, whatever it is. Alright, a Cyclonic Rift, and again, not paying into the tax. And uh, we drew into a Windfall there. Glad that I grabbed the Sol Ring during the last turn. Might be Trinket Mage into Jeweled Lotus now then. Alright, there's a Cavern of Souls as well, which is useful. Uh, play out the Mana Crypt. And the Sol Ring takes us into Trinket Mage. Trinket Mage can grab us the Jeweled Lotus. Nah, that's annoying. And our opponent scoops. They went for the Cyclonic Rift and realised that we're just going to rebuild again straight away. So it's Jeweled Lotus and we'd have to tap that and a few more lands. Uh, that would leave us with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 mana. Uh, so it's probably Utopia Sprawl. Um, going for Animate Dead onto the Sadisi again it gets us the Arbor Elf. We play the Arbor Elf this turn to get Summoning Sickness away from it. And then we can tutor up the Walking Ballista and one of the Auras next turn. And that allows us infinite mana. We'll play another game because I don't think that was a very satisfying conclusion. We might see the combo then. Alright, let's try again. Couple of Graveyard Commanders pitting it out this time up against Merin. We will keep that one because we've got a turn one tutor. Our opponent shocks in an overgrown tomb and of course they have the mana crypt on turn one. And then go for a doom dissenter. So we will go vamp tutor in response. And I think it's fine just being a soul ring for us. We can get down soul ring and the priest of titania. Wow and they've actually got both pieces of mana in their opening hand. So we're fighting an uphill battle here at least we've got one piece of fast mana ourselves. So play the Sol Ring like I said. Into a Priest of Titania, we'll tap for green for each elf we control. <laughs> wow, and they've got Gaia's Cradle as well. Yeah, this player has absolutely everything this game. It'll be uh, really unfortunate for them if they lose. Bastion of Remembrance now as well. No doubt part of a combo piece. Swinging in at us with a 1-1, one, one. we are not going to block. Okay, Animate Dead, so if we get into Entomb, we are pretty much set up actually have nothing to do with this hand now. So now we see Merin of Clan Neltoth, followed by three mana from the Gaia's Cradle into Shaman of Forgotten Ways. That will be 9, 10, 11 mana and 8 power that they need. So one power away at the moment. Alright, Sylvan Library might help us and we might as well be dumping life into that if they're going for Shaman of the Forgotten Ways anyway. 
All they have to do is get one more power onto the board here and they can tap out into Shaman of the Forgotten Ways and go wide on us. That is a diabolic intent. They sacrifice their token, so now missing a couple of points of power, but could easily tutor that up. Maybe went for a Rex Age here because they do have three mana held up. Nope, it is an E-Witness, so grabbing back the Diabolic Intent with that. And in two more tutors in Birthing Pod. Sacrificing the E-Witness will allow them to get into a 4-drop thanks to the Birthing Pod. Uh, that is a Yorgmoth Ram Physician this time. So drawing a card and killing off our Priest of Titania, the Doom Dissenter, will get them a Black Zombie token. And they do have enough power and mana at this point, so likely just winning next turn. Swinging at us for 3 points of Commander damage. And they've got three experience counters now, so the Doom Dissenter comes straight back into play. We'll see what cards we can get off the top. We definitely need a board wipe, but I don't see as though even a board wipe is going to really help us against all the fast mana. Uh, right, okay, so yeah, just more mana for us. Um, might as well just dump all the life into this. Playing out the Lotus Petal for blue mana, all we can really hope for is that they tap this down, try and reduce our life total to zero during the second main phase maybe they'll play around with their food too much but yeah we've lost this one pretty much not worthy that we could have gone necromancy during our last turn and gone for e-witness vamp tutor put something on top of our library and there we go losing to a shaman of the forgotten ways will make our opponent go wide on us not every day that you actually see someone get the shaman of the forgotten ways off so don't mind losing to that as well as all the fast mana, our opponent had a god hand there. Alright, so they turned in sideways there. They either would have gone wide on us, or all they had to do, which is what they did do, was sacrifice a creature to the Yorg Moth, and the Bastion of Remembrance finished us off. So that was a good little bonus game to end the video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Be sure to let me know if you want to see more from Muldrotha. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.